Hey, Retro Tech friends, and welcome to a live edition of Dave's Retro Video Lab. We are live streaming out to the internet, whatever that is. Whatever that means, I have no idea. Uh, but I want to thank you all for uh, joining me tonight. It's a very special night. Uh, we have the M1 Abrams, <laughs> uh, I can't even describe it. This is like a kick-ass um, cinema camera and it is so cool and I'm gonna talk about it in just a moment. Uh, but I just wanna give you a brief overview of what we got coming up here for tonight. Uh, yes, we are definitely gonna be talking about the F65 here. Uh, I, I gotta tell you, this thing is just balls crazy. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory about how I ultimately ended up getting this camera. Um, we will definitely dive into the buttons and the settings and the menus. It is uh, pretty involved, and I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm going to apologize, this is outside of my wheelhouse. A uh, camera like this is not like a, a simple little Canon XL1, hey! This thing is a serious ass camera, so, um, uh, there's some things I may not know about it. I mean, there's a lot of things I don't know about a lot of these cameras, but uh, we will all sort of uh, learn together uh, about some of the things about this camera has. Um, I printed out the book. Let's see what we got here. Where is it? I printed out the uh, manual. I went to Kinko's today. Now that's all they have. Uh, I went to Kinko's today and I printed out the manual. It is about 90 some odd pages, but it is really, really helpful. Uh, I actually discovered a couple things in the manual here that um, will uh, help me figure some things out that I was seeing. Um, and I'm going to, uh, you know, we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna do all that stuff. I actually have it hooked up uh, to the vMix box. So I will be able to like, when I turn it on, you can see the menu settings and whatnot. And again, I uh, there's a lot of settings in here that I don't know what the heck they're talking about. Um, but if you know, uh, oh, this is an important note. Uh, because I'm the only one, uh, I don't have my crew tonight. They're not available. They got better things to do and I don't blame them. So I'm going to be doing all this by myself, running the cameras, doing this, doing that. So I probably won't have a lot of time in the beginning to read your comments. What I will do, however, is at the end of the uh, live stream or close to the end, I will do viewer Q&A. And then that way, uh, because as you guys all know, you know me very well, I go off on these crazy tangents when I start looking at questions and... Um, uh, <laughs> like right now, I'm like, oh, I want to answer uh, Nebulous's question, but uh, I will answer all those questions. And if I glance over and if the question has something to do with what I'm talking about, then I'll also answer that too. But uh, first of all, uh, I want to say uh, good evening to you all. I know we got some friends, uh, I believe, are in the Netherlands right now. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, Gosh, where do I start? Well, first of all, uh, did anybody uh, here in the States see the eclipse yesterday? Um, me and my a good friend of our show, Greg Allen, he's our retro tech computer expert. He and I drove all the way up to upstate New York uh, near, I think it was... Um, about an hour north of Syracuse, we were right on Lake Ontario. I think it was called Sackett Bay or something like that. <laughs> I don't remember, I'm awful with that. But we witnessed the eclipse, a full eclipse, and I have to tell you, it was one of the most amazing things I have honestly, I can honestly say I have ever, ever seen. Uh, it was absolutely amazing and i know the next one is not for a bunch of 20 something years or 70 something years whatever it is but if you're still around i would definitely go check it out it was really an awesome uh, uh, just awe-inspiring i don't even know how to describe it but absolutely amazing i was trying to figure out how to get my still pictures uh from my phone uh that i took pictures uh to my computer but i didn't have time time ran out because i was focusing on this for you guys, 
I do it all for you guys. So, uh, that's that. Um, what else? Oh, I'm going to be at the Vintage Computer Festival East. I have a table that's this Saturday, uh, what, uh, April 13th, I think. Saturday, April 13th from like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you are in the area or if you want to just take a little drive, definitely stop by. I'm going to be bringing our... M1 battle tank, <laughs> M1 Abrams of uh, video cameras battle tank. Uh, it will be there. You will be able to check it out and uh, we'll have it on and you can not play with it, but you can check it out, you know, operate it or look at it. It, it is, I, I can't wait to explain this camera to you because <laughs> this thing is just stupid, crazy, big. And I mean, it is effing big. <laughs> That is the only way to describe it. So, uh, without any further ado, let's see where we're going to start. Okay, so uh, we're going to go into a little bit of backstory. It's the Dave backstory moment. If I had music, I would play the backstory music, but I don't have music. I just have me. So, uh, as some of you know, some of you occasionally see, uh, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, there is a community tab where I put up pictures. And maybe about two weeks ago, I put up a picture of a Sony F23. Uh, and I said, hey, I might be getting this. I can't wait to show you. Well, that deal fell through and uh, not by anyone's fault, really, but um, well, sort of was. But it's okay, it's not a big deal. So just to give you an understanding of what a Sony F23 is, a Sony F23 came out in about, it was introduced in 2006, and I think they went on sale in 2007, along with the Sony F35. The F35 had, I think, a super 35 millimeter um, a sensor, and the F23 had a two-thirds uh, size image sensor, and it was really kind of a cool camera. Uh, I want to say somewhat revolutionary. Prior to that, um, I would say Cine Alta cameras or cinema cameras, Sony cameras, they sort of looked like big ass uh, Sony beta, uh, what do you call it? Like beta SB cameras, like just like, looked like a big ENG camera. And that's what like Star, uh, what was it, George Lucas, he used a something, something 900, 9000. You guys know the numbers. But, but then Sony said, well, hey, we got to try to get these film people with their Airy cameras and their Panavision cameras. We want them to jump ship and go to digital. So uh, what Sony said is, hey, how can we do that? Oh, I got an idea. Why don't we make our digital cinema cameras look and work like a film camera? So with the Sony F35 uh, in, in, the, in the F23, they are truly shaped just like film cameras. You look at the shape, it has the same shape as an Ari film camera, or Ari, sorry. And uh, what was really cool about those cameras uh, is that they recorded onto an HD cam SR, I think it's called, a format. And what was really funny is, um, you know, with a film camera, you have the film magazine and they put the magazine on the back of the camera, right? Well, what Sony did is with their, <laughs> with their HD cam VTR, they basically made it in the shape of sort of like a film magazine and it clicked or attached onto the back of the camera. So the whole thing sort of worked like a film camera. Now the Sony F20, I'm oh, sorry, the F23 used a, what's called a B mount, which I think was sort of like an ENG type lens mount. I had to look this all up. I was entering into territory that I knew nothing about. Uh, the, the F23 had what's called a B4. Oh, maybe it's called a B4 mount. It's a B4 mount. And uh, those lenses are out there. They're sort of like ENG lenses. But the F23 was more of a cinema camera where uh, not only did it have the Super 35 sensor, uh, and it recorded in HD. Both cameras did record into H, uh, recorded HD, 1920 by 1080. Uh, but the uh, Sony F35 had a PL mount lens, which is what most um, film cameras type lenses that used at the time and still use. Uh, I believe it's a, it, it might be the industry standard, the uh, Airy PL mount. I think that's what it is. So you film 
experts and cinema camera experts. I'm probably going to screw up a couple things because, again, I'm in this semi-uncharted territory. So I just want to put out that disclaimer out there and help our friends in the comment section here. Uh, if you say, hey, wait a minute, Dave, it's really a XYZ, jump into the comments in the live chat and help our friends who are watching this video and me too learn more about these cameras. Like I said, really, really hard. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy thing. It's, it's not like, like I said, it's not like my Canon XL1. <laughs> Or is this an L? No, it's an XL1. Yeah, I just picked this up not long ago on uh, Goodwill Marketplace or Facebook Market. No, Goodwill. Shop Goodwill. Anyway, I'm so excited about this. Let me keep going. So, what happened with the F23 sale? Quite simply, it was on Facebook Marketplace. The price was absolutely amazing. But me, the dummy, I'm like, oh, that seems a little expensive. Maybe XYZ. Anyway, the guy went and I went back and forth and he made up some excuse and he sold it to somebody else, I guess. But, well, how did I get from that to this beast? Well, I will tell you how that happened. Um, it's a very silly Dave story. Do you guys know what like going down the rabbit hole is? It's an expression. I think it's based on, um, uh, what's the name of that? Um, Oh my gosh, I can't remember uh, with the cat, the Cheshire cat, and uh, oh, Alice in Wonderland? Is that right, kids? Uh, yeah. So uh, Alice in Wonderland, where they, she chases, I think, the rabbit down the hole. Well, there's an expression. I don't know if it's uh, used universally around the world, but here in the States, we have an expression where we chase the rabbit down the hole. That's what happened, and that's how, it hap what I, how I got this. Quite simply... Um, the F-23 sale didn't go through, but in my brain, I was thinking, oh, oh, wouldn't it be great to bring that to the Vintage Computer Festival East and Midwest show? I'll be there, too, actually. And, um, and I was all prepared to, like, oh, I'm going to do an episode about it, and, oh, I'm going to bring it to Vintage Computer Festival East. And then the sale didn't go through, and I'm like, Arr! so... But I still wanted to bring something really cool to the Vintage Computer Festival East show and have something on my YouTube channel. Uh, so I kept, I kept hunting and hunting for another F23. Then I was trying to negotiate for an F35. And there's one guy on eBay right now where he is asking for an F35, just the camera housing, for twice what I paid for this, or a little less than twice than what I paid for this. So um, uh, anyway, my wife's around and I can't disclose what I paid for this. So I'm really sorry about that, but maybe later I'll explain. But uh, so I searched and searched and searched and searched on the internet. And then I started learning more about this camera and I'm like, wow, what is an F65? And well, kids, <laughs> I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I found myself on eBay, and next thing you know, I'm bidding on an F60. Not bidding, I'm actually, um, it was like a buy it now or make best offer. And the next thing you know, um, I'm uh, working out a deal with the guy who owned this. And all of a sudden, I find myself driving up to Providence, Rhode Island a few days ago on Sunday, I guess. And uh, I basically bought it out of the back of an SUV in a Home Depot parking lot. Yep, just like any other purchase. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's this camera or any other of these cameras, there's always some crazy story behind it. Um, but we did check it out, and I, I it works, so that's good. Um, very, very crazy. So, uh, let's see. Hold on, let me see what you guys are saying. Being what? Well, who's being sued right now? Anyway, uh, uh, and the camera talking about you can still be using monitor. Yes. Ah, that's a great question. A note, Chris. Not even a question. A note. Interestingly enough. These, the Sony F35 and the F23 are still relevant today. You can still use those cameras. Um, they record in HD. They have amazing color space. Um, they can even record if you get a, a special adapter. Or no, you can run two HD SDI cables from the F35 to, um, and maybe the, I don't know about the... 23, but the 35, you can run two HD SDI cables to the recorder, uh, which comes with like an in-out uh, I.O. Uh, box, and you can record the uh, 444 color space HD 1920 by 1080 uh, with these cameras. Now, they're kind of big. 
Don't get me wrong. They're not little teeny tiny, you know, mirrorless cameras and all those little fancy cameras we're so used to using. These suckers are big. And this one, well, I, I'm guessing the 35 and the 23 are about the same size, but so uh, ultimately I ended up buying this. Now, okay, so I bought myself a, 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 a Sony F65, but here's the problem. I have lenses, I have all sorts of cool hardware, camera sleds, rods, and everything. Well, throw that stuff out the window because these cameras require special lenses, special base plates. They use all industry, film industry standard or broadcast film industry standard stuff. So the little parts and things that you have in your bins, in your lab at home, they ain't gonna fit, my friends. For instance, um, and I'll get into more detail, but this lens here, this is a PL mount lens. It's a prime lens and uh, it wasn't cheap. Uh, you can look it up on B&H photo video and you'll figure out what that is. Uh, if you'll notice too, on my Facebook picture, this item here, this is the HDR controller or the, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, <laughs> my brain just shut down. Uh, this is the controller for the, um, uh, what do you call it, the media recorder in the back here. I purchased that separately on eBay because I just thought it looked really, really cool. Everything for this camera and the F35 and the F23 for any of these Cine Alta cameras, crazy stupid expensive. I even looked on the e and on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, B&H used stuff, Everything is crazy stupid expensive, used or new. Uh, so <laughs> let's just say my Visa card got kind of a workout because in my head, in my dumb Dave brain, when I have this vision, and I don't know about you, but when I have this vision, I'm like, ooh, I've got to fulfill that vision. So of course with this camera, you want the lens, you want to have the really cool looking, uh, uh, what do you call it, the um, recorder, uh, uh, controller for the recorder. Um, you also want, of course, a matte box. So I got a matte box coming too. <laughs> I believe it's used, but I got a matte bo mat box, sorry, a matte box coming. Oh, and the other thing too for you, uh, our friends, so, the rods, like the base plate for the camera, that is what they call a 19 millimeter, a 19 millimeter airy uh, stand, industrial standard base plate. All this stuff has 19 millimeter rods. So of course, everything's bigger and more expensive. Um, so I basically had to buy a whole package for this camera. <sighs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, the accessories cost as much, if not more, than buying the dumb camera itself. Okay, so I've gone, oh my God, I've gone 20 minutes in and I haven't even started showing anything to you guys yet. So um, I want to apologize. Uh, oh, what's going on here? Well, you know, the camera's okay. Okay, so. I'm going to give you a little tour of the camera, uh, and then we're going to turn it on and check out some of the settings. Uh, so first, uh, because I don't have a camera person, uh, it's going to be me doing this whole circus tonight, so I apologize. Mm. And I also apologize for that 20-minute preamble leading up to this, because you probably didn't care anything about that. But here we go. We're going to check out the camera, so I'm going to go to a close-up Whoops, close up shot. Now... Um, the camera is turned off right now, and there's a whole procedure, well not procedure, but you got to turn on two different buttons. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the camera, and how that works, let me see if this, ah, so where is the power button? Let me see if I can get this on camera four. So there we go. So um, here, I'm going to take camera four, and uh, is it this knob? There we go. So underneath the recorder, by the way, this recorder, let me go to this camera. Hold on, kids. One second. There we go. This recorder here, uh, you'll see them on eBay for $10,000. And just so you know, I didn't pay. That came, by the way, this came with the camera, by the way. So this is a separate unit uh, that attaches to the, uh, the back plate of the camera. And it uses a medium called, uh, let me see if I can get in close on this. Where are we here? How about, 
camera four. There we go. It uses these SR memory cards. And let me tell you, these things are not cheap either. Uh, my system, my this camera that I purchased came with two cards. And there's a card reader, which I'll show you in a little bit. But I already have uh, in the top here. Let me see if I can tilt it down. Hold on. Uh, hold on, everybody. There we go. I'm going to tilt this down. There we go. In Whoa. Yeah, that's a long story about that plate, by the way. Maybe I shouldn't tilt it down. But So, hold on, everybody. One second. This is one of the annoying aspects. The plate that the guy gave me, the base plate, is busted. So the camera is locked. It won't slide off the sled, but it potentially can... Um, uh, it potentially can uh, just basically slide back, but let me just do this. Let me go up into here for you. Basically, this opens up, and in the back here, there are two slots, and the card pops right out. You put the card in, you close it, and now what we're going to do is we are going to turn on the camera, uh, and what you do to do that, one second, just getting the uh, power. So we go to the power button here, and we turn on uh, the camera here, or not the camera, the recorder here. Then I'm going to turn this around, actually back here, on this side of the camera. And again, we'll walk around the camera in just a moment. Then here is the camera power. You have to turn on the recorder power before you turn on the camera power. So now, the camera has a really loud fan, and it goes through a whole uh, diagnosis. There's a little light up here, and it goes through several steps uh, when it goes through and checks the camera. Um, and we'll let that. It takes a, I don't know if it's a minute, but it takes a little while. In the meantime, while it's uh, booting up, yeah, this is, this is not a camera, by the way, that you just like turn it on and go run around with it. Uh, you got to turn it on um, and it's got to take time to warm up. Let's see what else you got. Well, you know, the older camera models, there are cheap ones out there. You could just use it. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, that's right. Oh, thank you, Chris. That's a great note. So you don't have to use um, the recorder that's here. The camera has, uh, oh, and let me give you some tech stuff, tech stuff that I know about the camera. It can put out, uh, it has an 8K sensor, and that 8K sensor uh, uh, basically can output to, uh, on the SDI outs, it can output to 4K. So if you have a 4K recorder that takes a, a, a basically a, what is this, 6G or 12G, whatever the hell it is, but if it takes the, if you can take an output in 4K into your recorder, you're fine, you're golden, you can get a uh, little ninja recorder put it on here and uh you don't have to use the sony recorder that's here it's big it's bulky it's old school but i will tell you this um the camera also records um in a oh what is it called um it can record in hd on the uh sr what do you call it these uh sr memory cards so the camera can output hd and 4k uh, if you record in HD, you get 155 minutes of recording time on a 512 gig card, uh, but in 4K, you get 30 minutes. And um, you can record in 444 color space or 422 color space, and then there are a ton of options um, when recording, and that's where we get into the minutia of this, and I don't want to get too bogged down in that. Um, Uh-oh. Uh, let's see, uh, my phone can do... I know, I know. Some of you are like, well, uh, you know, my phone can do those things. But here's the problem with that. Your phone doesn't have an awesome lens like this. It doesn't have the glass, and that's the problem. Your phone is doing all sorts of trickery electronically to do the things that this camera is doing optically. And in my opinion, when it has to do it electronically, it doesn't do it as well as it can uh, optically. But I get it. You know, yeah, you can go film a whole movie with your phone and that's great. But, you know, good luck trying to do any effects or anything with it. That file size is so compressed that you even touch it and it's going to break down. So, okay. Uh, so where do we start? This thing is just crazy. But so I'm going to go around the front here again. And, uh, so much like uh, a typical camera that you are familiar with, um, let me get in really close here. Hold on. Hold on. 
this camera has menus just like your regular. Now, I have it in HD right now uh, because I just sort of wanted to show you. It, it's a big process to go to 4K, but right now it's set to HD. But like a regular, um, here, let me widen out a little bit. There we go. Like your uh, standard typical camera, I guess, you know, it has uh, menu buttons and you can program them. Uh, it's just like a big Sony F7, a version of an F7. Um, and the menus are pretty straightforward. Uh, essentially what I was poking around with the menus, uh, I mean, you hit uh, page and you go through these different uh, pages. Here, let me get in tight. There we go. And you can just you can change each one of these uh, parameters, if you will. And uh, right now we're at uh, 2398 uh, frames. Oh, it has a built-in ND sensor, by the way. Um, oh, this was kind of interesting. Um, what was really uh, what I found interesting is you can't the as far as I can tell. Uh, as far as the color temperature, there were three values. There was 3200K, 4400K, and 5600K. There, there's no like programming in a specific um, uh, uh, color temperature. So we're all used to being like white balancing and all this other stuff. I couldn't find that with it, that, this camera. If you guys know about it, please let us know. But yeah, there's no uh, auto white balance or anything we're typically used to doing here. So let's go back to this guy here. Um, and essentially, and again, we're just kind of going around uh, kicking the tires briefly. But I think if you hold down the setting, then once you get this, there is, uh, let me widen this out a little bit. Anyway, I think I'm getting bogged down and I should really go th around the, the things of the camera, but... And essentially, you can go to the different parameters. Um, yeah, I think I jumped uh, everything a little bit. I'm going to hold this down. And then you can select, uh, like I said, there's, there's no... Other than 55, 43, and 3, uh, 3200, there's nothing else in here. And maybe it does have a, a white balance of sort. I don't know. But let's kind of go back to the camera and let me give you a little bit more of a tour of that. And I apologize. Um, so uh, what makes this camera it has a film style lens mount. It's a PL lens. Uh, you can get zoom lens for it. Uh, I bought a prime. Uh, and there's a crop factor with the Super 35 sensor which it's either 1.5 or 1.6. So uh, all these numbers here, like a 30 millimeter lens, if you have a, uh, a full frame sensor, then it's 30 millimeters. But when you start getting into um, a sensor that has, uh, is a, has a crop factor, like a Super 35, uh, I think you have to do like 1.5, um, I think that's the factor. So this is really like a 45 millimeter lens uh, with a Sony Super, uh, with a Super 35. I think that's right. Correct me, gang, if I am wrong. Let me see. Well, if you're calling, it doesn't matter if you just get, yeah, right, right, right. I uh, love little camera. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, so, so that's the lens. Uh, here I showed you before. Uh, it has an SD card slot, or basically a memory stick. Do you guys remember the old Sony memory stick stuff? Well, it has a memory stick to record the camera settings. Uh, I don't have a memory stick uh, right now, but I will get one for this camera. It has assignable buttons. That looks very familiar, right? Uh, you have a viewfinder display and a viewfinder menu. This is important because you can program... Uh, more, there's more menus available to you via the viewfinder and not this LCD display, and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, you get a big old record button here. Uh, you have your menu selector here, which we were using just a moment ago, uh, and then you have your pages and settings. Uh, as we move back here, this... <laughs> I had to get this. This is so cool. This essentially, and I'll take this off, this essentially is... Let me see if I can go to four. Will that? Yeah, there we go. This essentially is, let me iris it up. Is that getting brighter? Yeah. This essentially uh, allows, uh, allows you, it's on a long cable, so you can take this and uh, basically start and stop and do other functions with the recorder, even set up the, uh, from what I just played with it earlier, uh, you can set what standard, whether it can be 4K or HD, 
but it's really handy to have this. If you don't have this, uh, when you get a recorder, and when you get a recorder and you don't have this, you really want this, and people on eBay are charging a fortune for these. And don't get confused, the one, uh, the uh, control panel for the F35 and the F23 is smaller, and it probably doesn't have the same functionality uh, as this one does. And one interesting note, there is actually a slot for a memory stick. And I'm wondering, I'm guessing that is for saving VTR setups, I guess. Um, but the buttons are pretty uh, obvious here. Let me go in tighter. Um, the buttons are pretty obvious. You got home, TC, and you just hit these, and it takes you to a particular menu setting. And then you take this little wheel here, and you go to the memory setting, or you go to the setting that you want to uh, adjust. Um, the card, uh, by the way, the controller rather, does come with this, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, V-mount for the side of the recorder, and it goes on like this. Uh, let me get out of that, actually, let me go home, there we go. Now, I'm going to rotate the camera to the back, and uh, not a lot going on here in the immediate back. You have your power switch and a tally. Uh, what I had here, what came with the camera was something called a Bebop, uh, a battery mount that attached to here. It was just kind of big and bulky and I took it off. Um, here, I'll show you real quick if I can dig it out. Hold on one second, let me find it. Ah, here it is. Uh, what was on the back was this, it's called a Bebop. Uh, it's basically a battery mount and it screws right onto the back here you have uh, these connectors here and on the sides that can power the different uh, hardware that you have hooked up to it. I just wanted to streamline the camera a little bit. You can see how big the camera gets by having this thing on there so I just wanted to take it off um, and eventually I'll get a plate that'll go back on. Not a plate but there's a little cover here that goes back on there now. We get into the recorder uh, here, hold on, sorry. Uh, we're gonna get into the recorder <laughs> and this thing has tons of IO. Uh, oh, that's the camera, sorry. Uh, let me tilt this up a little bit. Hold on, there we go, and I'm gonna loosen up. There we go. So you have the recorder control here. You have audio, earphones, you have uh, time code in, uh, time code out and auxiliary in. Uh, I guess this is audio level for the earphones. And then down here you have an aux out. So you could probably send another feed out to another source if you want to. Um, and then we come along to this area right here. And let me just zoom in a little bit so we can see that. I'm trying to talk louder because I'm not near the microphone, so I apologize. All right, there you go. So back here you have gen lock. This way you can sync, uh, make sure your camera is timed properly. You got a uh, shutter. I'm not sure what that shutter is. I wonder if you can control the shutter remotely. Uh, you have HDI out, so there's probably another, uh, maybe with luminance maybe. SDI out. Uh, so again, the camera has two SDI outs that are, uh, you can program them uh, with various different things on the outputs, like a typical camera. Uh, and then we have a remote here. Uh, and then we get down into the lower part of the camera. Oops, sorry. We get down here. And you have uh, basically power taps, I think. Uh, lens, uh, probably a lens controller. External I.O., I'm not sure what that is. I'm wondering if that's like a mono. No, it's not a, that must be power or something. I'm not sure what that is, I'll be honest with you. You have DC out, so I'm guessing you can power other items off the camera. And then you got 24 volts out. Wow, that's pretty wild. So, um, and of course you have your camera power. Now I'm going to spin this around the other way because I'm getting all the cables sort of wound up. So here, uh, so in the front of the camera, <laughs> this thing is like a big pig. It's just huge. Um, let me just widen it out a little bit here. I hope you guys are having an okay time so far. Um, whoop, wrong camera. Who's operating the cameras? Um, uh, not much going on here in the front. Quite simply, you have the lens. This camera, by the way, is pretty filthy. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of like greasy stuff on here, uh, which I'm trying to figure out how to clean. Oh, you have your, oh, let me widen out. There we go. 
Uh, you have your viewfinder port here, and then there is an Ethernet port up here. I'm guessing you can probably send data out of the camera, maybe video, I don't know, but there's an Ethernet port there. And then we're going to rotate this around a little bit. Let me just be careful I don't drag the cable. Here, hold on. And there we go. So, uh, did I screw that up? Oh, no, no, we did do that already. Oh, no, we did. I think we did most of the camera already. How about that? So, um, pretty wild, I have to say. Uh, everything on this camera. Let me see what you guys are saying. What is the B oh, uh, model? Oh, um, ooh, hold on. You know what? I got to be honest with you. Here. Uh, Nebulous, uh, I think you were asking about the Bebop. You know what? You're going to have to look it up. I don't see a model number on here, but it's pretty unique looking. I don't even know if they sell it anymore. Uh, you can just check on B&H's site. Here, let me put it up close so you can see it. So that's what it looks like. And it has screws that screw on to the back. Um, and oh, and one thing about the Bebop is you have one battery that powers the camera and another battery that can power peripherals. So uh, what I figured out is on the Bebop, what happens is uh, the tap for the camera is up here. And then all your auxiliary taps here are for the uh, auxiliary battery. Now, uh, one thing I read about this, sorry guys, one thing I read about this camera, uh, sorry, one thing I read about this camera is it is super duper power hungry. It uh, burns through batteries left and right. The Bebop apparently used a series of batteries together in order to provide power for longer. Uh, I ultimately just, uh, the camera came with a power supply, but I also bought this power supply used on eBay uh, in a perfect world, I would have hoped that this power supply would have mounted onto the back here, but as you can see, there's no way to take this off. So I was wrong about that. But the good news is, I'm hoping to use this with my Betacam um, uh, ENG cameras that I have. So this is not a waste of money. This actually worked out okay. Uh, just in case you guys were wondering, this is an AC-DN110, AC-DN110. Oh, and the power, by the way, uses, I think they call it a Lemo connector. Let me show you this, hold on. Where is it? So the power uh, is here and it goes down to your typical, um, Oh, I don't want to move it, but there's a power brick down under the camera. All right, so uh, let me spin this back around. <laughs> this guy is really big. Um, oh, and then up here, hold on, I'm going to widen out just a little bit so you can see the top stuff here. Um, these cameras, I have to tell you, uh, are built like tanks, and they they get a lot of abuse. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. Uh, by the way, you can get a viewfinder for this. A viewfinder that I found was like practically new in the box is $2,300, and it mounts onto this right up here. Uh, you probably take this plate off and flip it upside down. And again, it has these heavy duty uh, 19 millimeter rails, and all this stuff slides in and out. Uh, again, this thing is built like a tank. I mean, they probably get totally abused on a film set. They're flying them around. They're, they're in all sorts of extreme conditions. So these guys are, are, are just incredible. And I can't begin to tell you how happy I am that this thing works. <laughs> I really expected it to be busted when I got it. Uh, like, oh, there was something the guy didn't tell me about it. But it does work, best I can tell. Let me just set, check out, um, so uh, we're, I'm gonna be honest with you here. I bought this because I thought it was really interesting and I wanna bring it to like a film festival. Um, but the, pro not a film festival, but a retro tech festival. I'm gonna bring it out to the Midwest show as well out in Schaumburg, Illinois. But let me be honest with you. Uh, yeah, you can use this on a set. Uh, and, and yeah, you know, Chris, you were saying, you know, the camera is still relevant today the problem is, is that the camera is big and heavy and it's cumbersome. And if you want a zoom lens for this camera, it is going to set you back a ton of money. So you can buy, by the way, just so you know, you can buy used Sony Primes, uh, like a 3585 
a fi 35, 50, and an 85 millimeter Sony primes. There's a set on sale, a PL primes, on eBay for about uh, the the sellers asking about 1,800 bucks. So you can buy a set of lens lenses, but you have to remember there's a crop factor with this camera. So a 30 is a 35 is really not a 35. A 50 is going to be more like a 1.5. So 50 is going to be like a 75. Uh, is that right? And then uh, an 85 is going to be a hundred and something. But um, so yeah, you can use it, but you got to buy like an extra big uh, tripod head to handle. The weight on this body alone is 11 pounds. It's it is heavy, and that's without all the extra stuff. Uh, it's incredibly heavy. Hold on, uh, Dave, you had dead before. Oh, um, oh, so you can take a B4. Oh, so that's good to know, Chris. You can take a B4 lens or mount a B4 a lens. It's a B4 mount, and you can put it on a PL mount. Um, I didn't have any of the lenses, so I'm like, you know what? Uh, I just went and bought a new lens because I just thought it looked really cool, which is really stupid. I could have probably taken the time to buy a used lens uh, for this on uh, eBay. The problem is I don't like buying things on eBay without seeing them. Um, like I got to test this out, but you know, someone's going to send something from across the United States. Who knows if the lens is damaged or something and they didn't tell you, then you have to go through the whole hassle. So I just bought a new lens because the lens is so important to the camera. Um, and here, let me just turn that so you can see it. Now, uh, with this lens, there is no autofocus. There's no auto eye. There's nothing. It is purely a piece of glass that allows you to adjust the iris and the focus and that's it and by the way if you come to the vintage computer festival east this saturday april 13th or the vintage computer festival uh midwest i am bringing uh my pal here the sony f65 i'm gonna have a matte box on it uh focus control um uh, so it's going to look like it's like it just came off the set of a movie. Oh, that is one important thing I totally forgot to tell you guys about. Uh, while doing my research, the movie Oblivion with Tom Cruise, which came out in maybe 2013, was filmed with this camera. Uh, not this this camera, but filmed with the F. Uh, 65. And this camera, and I totally forgot to mention this, this camera was introduced in 2011. So it was 2011. And they probably started selling them uh, in 2012. And interestingly enough, and I know I'm going to mispronounce this, but there's a big rental house in Los Angeles, Otto Nemitz, or I hope I didn't mispronounce that. Uh, what I read in a trade article uh, from way back in 2012, they ordered two hundred of these cameras and I believe this is one of them from that uh, batch of cameras they ordered uh, and the reason why I know that is the guy who sold me the camera had the case from Otto Nemitz I hope I pronounced that right uh, but he already sold the case so I just got the camera so that's my guess as far as the backstory for the camera but it came out in about 2011 and it was incredible like this camera was way ahead of its time and Sony was really making a full-on push to get filmmakers to use uh, their digital cinema equipment um, and this was really a huge jump uh, from the f35 which was only five years no uh, like three or, or four years older and they made this huge uh, jump. So, anyway, back to the camera. I know you guys are excited about that. Is uh, we can be dead? Uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, you can do Canon P and with. Okay. Uh, I'm just reading some of your comments, kids. One second. I haven't thought this camera is that big. It looks. Oh my gosh. It is. Uh, to give you an idea, right now, just the way it is, I'm going to take just a, a guess with the lens, the body of the camera and uh, the recorder pack, I'm going to take a wild guess and say this camera alone, the body is 11 pounds. I'm going to say this is probably another three or four pounds. Uh, so now we're talking about, say, 15. And then when you put on the lens, it's probably a couple pounds. I think all kitted out, this camera is probably up to 20 pounds. <laughs> Matte box, rails, all that stuff. Just crazy big. Okay. So um, one important thing I want to show you, the SR memory, and I'm going to get to turning on the camera really soon, so I apologize. Um, so this SR memory that I was showing you earlier, maybe I got it on camera four. Here, hold on. Camera four have, uh, so let me go in tighter. 
This media um, is, this card is actually very heavy. And what's interesting is um, you put it in the recorder. I guess I can't do that without you seeing it. You put it into the recorder, but now when you have to transfer the files, you have to get this device, and I'm going to show you now. Uh, and again, I'm the camera guy, so I apologize. You have to get this box here uh, to transfer it into your computer. <laughs> so, so essentially, um, and this is not cheap either, uh, but this came with the camera uh, as part of the whole, um, uh, as far as part of the whole auction. Uh, so when you want to transfer your footage after you film it, you have to put it in here and then transfer it. And this thing is like a small size computer. It's pretty big and heavy. I have not tested it yet. And I can't tell you how big the file sizes are. I have not played with this at all yet. Uh, maybe I will test it out, um, you know, come time at Vintage Computer Festival East. If I have time, where are we? Ah, there we go. So uh, why don't we start looking at the output of this camera? I know you guys want to see it. Um, and we'll go through the menus. Hold on one second. Oh no, what did I just do? One second, kids. Hold on. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. Let me see. Um, you can't read cards more than this. Yeah, uh, this is the reader. Yep. Uh, yes, you're right. My bad. Can okay. So, uh, oh, and just so you know, the Canon, uh, hold on. What am I doing? Here we go. Great. Okay, so we're going to turn this on. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything else that I forgot to tell you guys. It, uh, so, so movies, uh, th this was a serious camera. Like, this was like a cinema grade video, well, a digital video camera, I guess you would call it, but really heavy duty and not for the faint of heart. Like I said, when you have to buy peripheral, or not peripherals, uh, accessories for this, Whatever you paid for the camera, expect to pay like half the price of the camera for all the extra stuff. And that's even used prices. So um, let's turn, uh, let's, let's fire up the camera. Now, one of the things I had to do is, uh, let me get back to this. I am using, for the purposes of this, the camera outputs uh, 4K and HD. Now I'm using this SDI to HDMI 6G uh, converter to get it into my vMix uh, 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 production computer. Now, right now the camera is set to HD, um, so it wouldn't really matter, but this camera doesn't have HDMI out. It only has SDI out. So I'm using this box to get uh, the SDI out of the camera into the box, translate it to HDMI, and then into my computer so you guys at home can see it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna hook up the viewfinder output of the camera because it'll be easier for you to see the menus uh, instead of me trying to shoot it with a stupid monitor like I normally do and I know that's annoying. Uh, so what I learned as I was playing around with this is that the viewfinder, uh, let's see, I'm gonna turn this around for a moment. So the normal SDI out that I was always using is right here. I'm going to go to camera four. Let's just zoom in there. All right, there we go. So that's your SDI out. Let me pan the camera again. I'm not a very good camera person. There we go. So uh, there's the SDI out. And again, uh, it's programmable with different output features, but the viewfinder, uh, oh, I am so sorry. I am such a liar, but I have programmed SDI out too to have the menus for the camera. So here's SDI out two. Here's the viewfinder port. So the viewfinder would come up, uh, be here, and it plugs right into there. And then you actually have uh, USB con. Oh, sorry guys, I apologize. You also have USB connectors here. I haven't figured out, and those are not. Those are like. I wonder if you can attach this to a computer and use it. To, um, to basically move your footage from, I don't know, I wonder what those are for. Maybe to update the, uh, update the camera. Um, I don't know, but those are, that's like a, the peripheral side, um, not the input side to the computer. At any rate, so what I'm gonna do here, it takes a HD, SDI, B, a BNC connector. Oh, sorry, let me move this over. There we go. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I'm really trying to do my best to kind of give you a walk around of the camera. And, and, and for me, it's really like from a new person's point of view. So you expert camera guys out there, just bear with me. I really apologize. 
Uh, I hope to really do more episodes um, about this uh, with the camera because uh, it is, I got to tell you, I was so curious about it when I got it. Um, I was pretty nervous. Like it, it's just, it's way outside of my um, uh, knowledge base, I guess you would say. Mm. Let me just clean up a little bit. All right. And I'll tell you one secret that I'm going to share with you. So don't tell anybody. Another reason why I was looking for a big camera or when I saw the F23 and I thought, hey, because I was too lazy this year to bring 10 cameras like I did the last time to both the Vintage Computer Festival East and the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest. I was like, you know what? I just want to bring one camera. <laughs> Just one. And I thought, oh, if I got the F23, well, that'd be great. It's so cool that everybody will just want to look at that and not bother with any other camera. But now I'm bringing this and I'm going to have it fully kitted out like it just came from a film set. And that's all I'm bringing. I'm going to, and, and that's it. Because I think this alone is so crazy cool. No one's going to want to look at a uh, boring, hold on. Sorry, this part wasn't prepared for. Nobody's going to want to look at this when you have that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to get the visual in there. Let's see what else you guys are talking about. Um, uh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Like I said, this is, a, um, this is outside of my wheelhouse. So I did a bunch of research, you know, quickly searching, uh, thumbed through the manual while, while it was in the parking lot at Kinko's getting it after it got printed out. I have two copies. I'll bring one with me to the Vintage Computer Festival. Okay. Let's, uh, it's turned on. Let's, uh, let me switch you over to the menus. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Hey, there's my little smiley face guy. So this is the output of the camera. And right now we're in HD 20, uh, uh, hold on. Let me get over here. I'm going to move the microphone so I don't sound so distant. So hopefully you can still hear me. Okay. Oh, let me do this. Hold on. Oh, there we go. That's much better. Okay, great. Oh, but now it's in, ah. Con, hold on one second. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let me just turn it this way. All right, now you guys should really be able to hear me quite well. Okay, so here's the output of the camera. Again, there's no zoom functionality. I have an iris and I have a focus. Uh, no big deal, nothing new. Every camera does that. I know, no big surprise there. Uh, so here, I'm just trying to get my critical focus. Oh boy. All right, so I don't know. You guys can probably tell better than I can, but right there, maybe? I don't know. You guys are going to have to tell me. But anyway, so uh, hopefully when I switch over to, uh, let's see. Oh, hello. <laughs> All right, here. I'm going to use this guy here. One second. Uh, hopefully I'll get this on the menus. This way you can see it better. All right. I believe if I hold down, uh, is it VF display or is it this? Ah, there we go. You see this little outline here that appears? I believe that means that uh, we're pushing the menu system to the viewfinder and hopefully, hey, hey, woohoo! I actually got that right. So uh, I'm going to scroll through some of these settings here. Um, we have camera. I guess if you hit, uh, if I come back here, right there, oop, sorry guys, new at this. So if I hit, um, probably setting, I'm gonna go back to the output, and I hit that. Let's see, does that do anything? No. Oh, I hit this, I bet. Anyway, oh, oh there we go. So now we're kind of getting into some of these menus. And I am not gonna, just so you know, I am not gonna go through every single little feature on this. We'd be here all night. I'm just kind of giving you a little bit of bat, just a little bit of taste of what the menus look like. And of course, in each one of these, you have different video settings. Uh, S oh, uh, you have S log on here. You got a bunch of other stuff. You got test signals. And then I'm guessing if I go back, now we go to the viewfinder output. You can program that. You got display information. Um, I found a lot of stuff in here that was uh, that was good. Configure. Uh, oh, fan mode. Oh my gosh, the fan was on like super uh, loud earlier. I'm glad I figured out how to fix that. Um, 
you got this media format network so i'm guessing oh there is a way to wi-fi from this i don't know uh, send out wi-fi but i don't know if video rides on that wi-fi or if it's just data um let's see let's go into here all right and then we're going to come down here so you have uh, Chris, help me out here. Is a LUT a look-up table? Is that right? And different LUTs have different looks. Is that right? I hope that's right. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so the menu on the camera, as uh, as Hudio 6 was just saying, it looks like a regular menu that you'd find on, a, of course, a Sony camera. Um, but you have so much programmability, it is just incredible. And there are things here, like I know that um, you just have things here that are really uh, incredible, um, but it's very, very deep. <laughs> I can't tell you how, like when I looked at this, my eyes just went, Pew! but here's one, oh, we got a 16 by nine marker uh, cursor. Um, so let me get out of this for a moment and just see if the stuff comes up on the main. Hold on, let me see if I go back to, if I turn the menu off, does the camera display, ah, and there's the camera display, great. So, uh, let's see, if I go viewfinder display, does that put it up on, ah, look at that, I figured it out. So if I go back to here, oh, here we are again, terrible camera work, thanks. Um, when I hit VF display, what that did was push all the information to uh, the output of uh, the video. At least I thought it did. Or here, hold on. Let me do it again. Come on. It came on earlier. What happened? One second. Okay. I'm a, oh, oh, there it is. Hold on. So this, so if I go to VF menu, that puts the menu on screen. Good. If I hit it again, it takes it away. If I hit... This right here, uh, what is it, VF display, that should pop, uh, turn that off and on. There we go. There we go. So I was just a little slow. But you can see how just like a regular camera, it has all this information, uh, how much stuff, how much footage is left on your mag uh, or your uh, SD card or the SR card. Um, and this right now, I got this set up to 422 color. 10 bit. Oh, one other important, important, important thing I wanted to tell you about real quick. I could be wrong about this, but a friend was saying uh, how uh, the camera can record, uh, is it 8K 16 bit uh, files, uh, which must be incredibly big. But I think it was like 444 color space, 16-bit, 8K files, um, uh, essentially. But you had to get like a software upgrade or something. I don't think this camera got that based on what the owner was telling me. So uh, it can have some like really amazing imagery, um, but it's at the cost of storage. And I don't even know what you record that. Maybe it records them onto these cards, um, these SR, uh, what do you call these, SR memory cards. I'm not sure. So back to the camera. Let's go back to this output. Um, let's see. So, right. Color temperature doesn't look as warm as I would like. So what we're gonna do is, let's see if this works. Yeah, it's at 3200. Uh, huh, interesting. Um, what else? Uh, oh, it has pre-programmable things here, but let's get to the VTR for a second, and let me go back to the operation of the camera. So, uh, as you can see here, and I believe that's camera four, as you can see here, you have uh, basically a record button, right? And that record button uh, will trigger the uh, recorder here to, well, obviously record. Um, and let's see if I hit it. Let's go to the close-up. Does it start up? Oh, that's good, so it's blinking, good. And now we're gonna go back to the recorder on this camera. Oh, and there you go, you can see it uh, recording. Now what I'm gonna do, because it's kind of annoying that it's on its side, I'm gonna take it off, and I'm gonna do this for you. Uh, let's get to this camera. There we go. And there you go. And what's interesting is um, this essentially works like just regular VTR controls. Uh, I can stop and you hit play record if you want to record a file. Um, I don't 
I guess this can bring in audio of all different sorts. There's a lot of stuff this thing can do. And again, I am scraping uh, just the surface of uh, the depth that this thing can do. But this recorder, by the way, is incredibly, this uh, controller is super, super useful when using this um, uh, the recorder pack here. You can hit play record. Uh, you have very limited VTR controls here. You almost have to have this when using the uh, camera. Now, what's interesting is uh, you can play back footage. So right now, hold on one second. I'll get this back on there. One second. Hold on. I'm doing it the wrong way, I think. Uh, nope, that's right. There we go. Yes, like I said, super, uh, super important. You can either record from here or record from the camera, and I'm going to stop it. Good. Now, if you want to, and I'm going to try this, so bear with me. If you want to change it to 4K, and again, just bear with me on this. I think what you do, you go to System, and we're going to go System Format, and I'm going to scroll down. And I think you press the button. This guy here is your enter button. So you press that. At least I think you do. Ah, uh, there we go. And now, I don't know if you can see it, but right now it says HD 1080 something. I'm going to press that, and I'm going to change it to F65 RAW. <laughs> and then i got to change to the encoder. And there's a light. There's an SQ. Uh, I'm just going to go for light for now. And then I think you hit enter. No, you hit this. And then how do you activate it? Oh, uh, oh, then you have to hit function and this. Hold on, did I do it right? Hold on, you got to go function. Ah, no, and then encode. And then when you're ready to... Hold on, there's something weird here. One second, everybody. I apologize. I was got this working before. I go encode, encode. Oh, because... No, that's right, yeah. So, to switch it over. And I think it, you do this, I thought. No? All right, well, I'm wrong. But I know that when I go to... Um, when I get out of this, so if I go back, it's still going to be in... Oh, no, it went to S... No, hold on. One second. Let me just take a look here. No, it still says HD. So it did not do it, and I did something wrong. But here, I'm going to go one more time. Go system. Go uh, system format. Go to uh, out of this. We're going to go. I'm just going to go at a raw. I don't even know what HFR is, but I'm going to do this. You scroll down. Oh, you go set. I am so sorry. It's set. That's what you hit. And then when you hit function this... It says, are you sure you want to do that? And then you hit OK. Oop, wait a minute, one more time. Is that right? Hold on. You go set, and then you hit OK. Oh, no, it's, you got to hit, oh, yeah, it's, it's um, can't change. So I think you hit this and that. No? Oh, come on, one second. Oh, I know what the problem is. I have to stop it. I think I have to stop the recorder because right now it thinks it wants to record. Come on. This is so annoying. So yeah, no, I think we're... Uh, hold on, let me go back up here and see what happened. Oh, uh, no, yeah, it's all set. Uh, encode. And then when you hit set, it says uh, check check the settings. Oh, maybe I have something not set right. Oh, okay, maybe that's what it is. Let's try this. Ah, I knew it. Okay, good. So you want to change format, you hit OK, and now it wants me to power the whole system off. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to turn off the recorder. I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to turn the camera off. Don't forget, that's over here on this side. And now we'll let it stop for just a moment. And now, uh, we'll go ahead and, oh, always a reminder, you got to turn on the recorder first. So here, why don't I put this on here? All right, sorry, everybody. Here we go. This is on. And now I'm going to turn on the camera. I'm going to turn that on. And now it's going to go through 
the boot up process and we'll leave that there for a moment while I drink the soda. I'm sorry about the, it just takes a while to figure this stuff out. Sorry about that. Hey, Evan Ols Olson. Uh, let's see. And uh, Kalaja. So sorry, it's boring. My apologies. Hold on. Mm. All right, let's see what's happening here. Are we in? All right, where are, what, uh, yeah, I think we're in. Well, let's, let's cut to the camera. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. I think we are in 4K now, but let's check. So remember the viewfinder display? I think I just tap it, right? No. Ah, there we go. Oh, hold on, it disappeared. Let's go back. Uh, boom. Oops, sorry, everybody, one second. Let me just tap the VF display. It should tell us... What does it say? Uh, S, I got I. I think it's in 4K at this point, I believe. So, uh, and then, uh, let's see what else. So there we go. Oh, so let's try recording, right? So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to come down here to two. I'm going to hit the record button. That's lit up there. And I'm going to come back to the output. All right. And is there like a tally? That's, oh, yeah, it's recording right on the bottom there. And you can see, okay, good. All right, so now it's recording, and uh, here I'll just put my hand in front of it. Hello, I don't want to scare anybody, but uh, oh, hey everybody, it's Dave on the F65. I know that was really scary, but let me get out of here. Okay, so we have that, and now we're going to come back to the camera, and we're going to hit uh, record to stop, I believe, and now we're going to go back to the camera. Oh, let's go back uh, here, and I think if you this button has been already programmed to play back the last uh, clip. So if I hit that and go back to this, and I think that is indeed because the camera is going to center up. Yeah. So right now it's actually playing the video that I just recorded. Um, that is really cool. And then, interestingly enough, it's not. It did not record. Oh, that's really interesting. It did not record the menu. Anyway. Oh, that's really bad. Why did I do that? Guys, tell me, why did I do that? That was really stupid. Next time, I will have a model here, and we will just film the model. So, okay. Wow, that's pretty neat. So, uh, right now, oh, I'm still playing. No, that is me. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes these things just go totally off the tracks, but uh, at any rate, so uh, that's neat. So the time code is not running at this point. Uh, gosh, I wish I can, hold on one second. All right, so uh, just checking some things out here. Hold on, uh, Del Campa. Hey, Ruben, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, Appa is only on the video. Oh, interesting, okay, so that's good to know. Uh, so uh, I was worried that I might stamp the menu to the output of the recording, but it's good to know that they they won't do that to you. Um, so, you know, I you're, it, it, this is crazy. This thing is so big. Um, and here, hold on, I'll get a measuring. I'll tell you right now how big it is. <laughs> With the lens to the recorder, it's about 16 inches. And it's about 13 inches high. So it's, uh, what was that? It's about 16 by 13. And if I had to guess, I would say the entire thing <laughs> kitted out uh, with rods, matte box, lens, recorder, not even the batteries. We're just using regular shore power. It probably comes in somewhere at like 17 pounds, roughly. I know this part is 11 pounds. Uh, interesting. Um, did you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns? Uh, I mean, I think I kind of whipped through the whole camera. Was there anything specific that you wanted to, uh, want me to check out um, and see uh, the camera? Let me go back to the output. That's probably more interesting, I guess. And by the way, just so you know, little tennis ball man, that little tennis ball right there, that is on a uh, light stand, and I use that when I set up the lab. 
There's actually a smiley face on the other side. Hold on. Wait for it. There's actually a smiley face on the other side, uh, and that's at my height. So that way, when I'm setting up the lab for a live stream or recording the show, I use this to set up the shot. So there's a little bit of Dave's behind the scene for you. I know you guys really don't give a rat's butt about that, but I thought it'd be interesting. And oh, the microphone has been aimed the wrong way this whole time. So let's fix that. Hold on. We're gonna fix that. Yes, this is really high tech. Oh, that's bad. Yes, the microphone is down here. I got it. You, you guys have no idea how... There we go. Now you probably hear me a heck of a lot better, I bet. Uh, oh, the mechanical shutter. Uh, give me one second. I got. I, you know what? I found the setting for that. We have to go to... Um, all right, Evan, here we go. I got to remember this, but give me a second. So we're going to go to the output of the camera. Let's get off that junk. And I believe we go, I'll go to the VF menu. Oh, not that one, we'll do this. Is it a tap? Hold on, I'll get there, Evan, one second. Oh, wait a minute, the mechanical shutter. I take that back, it's these two buttons right here. Let me go in closer. So you hit these two buttons here, I think it's just you hit this. Or is it together? Or is it, oh, hold on. Ah, there you go. So now it's switching over to the mechanical shutter. I can't believe I remembered that. All right, great. And I hear something whirring in there now. All right, let's go back to the output of the camera. Oh, not that one. Oh, now it's uh, adjusting, I think. So it's switching over to the mechanical shutter, I hope. It's getting, uh, I hope it's not, I think it's okay. I think I've seen this before. Wow, it goes through a whole diagnosis when you do that. That's really interesting. It's uh, still going through the diagnosis. Great, it's ready to go. There you go, Evan. So that's how you get it to get to the mechanical shutter. Um, I see motion blurring, that's kind of cool. Is that the way it's supposed to be, Evan? Does that look right? Does that look good? Uh, that's really wild. Okay, all right, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take too long. That was actually pretty good. I, I did kind of fumble through this uh, before I went on the air with it. Uh, what other questions did you guys have? Let's see, see if there's any special high dynamic range. Oh, um, uh, all right, so here we go. I am going to go through more of the menus for, uh, not that, uh, so here, let's put this guy back. I would like to get the viewfinder for this. I really would. Uh, I didn't bother hooking a monitor up to it because I figured we were going to be looking at the output of the camera anyway, so why bother? So let's see what other settings the camera has. If you guys are still interested and you're not totally bored to tears, um, I'll be more than happy to show you what else we got going on here. Um, uh, damn loud. Yeah, oh. This camera, by the way, um, you can control the fan, but it gets hot. Like, it's blowing warm air. Here, I'll show you the vent. Okay, let's turn this around. All right, so I'll show you the vent right here. This vent, let me get in the light, there we go, is definitely blowing out some warm air. You can definitely warm your hands on a cold day with this thing. Um, all right, let's, uh, we were gonna show some menu stuff. I think somebody asked about dynamic. Oh, the camera has, um, that's a great question. Uh, it has 13 or 14 stops of dynamic range. I read somewhere where it said 13 on some online video review from way back when, but Sony's uh, literature said 14 stops. Um, but that's, that's pretty much with what modern, I think, um, the cameras that we all buy at B&H, you know, the mirrorless DSLR cameras and whatnot, I believe those are at 14 stops and all the little boxes you buy and mount lenses onto. So this was way ahead of its time, way back in 2011, I guess. So let's go through the menus. Here we go. Oh, we don't want to see that. That's boring. Uh, here we go. Let's turn on the menus again, I believe. Where is it? Not, not that menu. Here, let's try this menu. No. How about, maybe I hold, ah, there we go. Oh, sorry. I gotta hold it down, I'm guessing. 
There we go. Great. So, uh, here we go. Um, let's go through and find uh, something interesting here that you guys will dig. Let me move my phone over so I can see your questions while I do this. If you could, would you buy a huge box lens for it? That would be... Well, I did buy, Ruben. You probably missed it. But... Um, uh, Ruben, I did buy a uh, matte box for the camera. Uh, it's coming, and it's not. Uh, it'll be here tomorrow or the next day. But uh, for Vintage Computer Festival East, this whole thing is going to be totally kitted out. Uh, so it looks like it just came off a film set, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, by the way, I just have to say, I have a broken base plate down here. And I, was, I have a broken base plate right here. And uh, oh my gosh, trying to move the camera, because right now it's just on this dovetail plate. Um, and don't worry, there are, are uh, there are little mechanical things here that prevent it from sliding off. I can't tell you, trying to move this thing around is like wrestling a bear. <laughs> it is so big. Here, I'll show you, ready? Hold on. There we go. Oh my. I'm not even going to. Oh my gosh. I think it just. Hold on, kids. One second. This could be really bad. Oh. Oh yeah. Hold on. Let me turn the mic around. You know, I always screw that up. Here we go. So uh, let's get it back on. There we go. So I have a new base plate on order. Um, so I have a new base plate on order here. Uh, and again, Nothing on this camera or for this camera. Nothing is cheap. <laughs> or there you are. Nothing is cheap. Oh, I can't. I, uh, Evan, you have, well, you have an idea. You certainly have an idea. All right. So, um, did that come from the space shuttle? No, I don't think so. Uh, it, um, I probably, it, uh, this came from Boston. It was in Boston before I got it, and I think it was in LA prior to that. Let me see what other questions you would have. Um, Dave, yeah, oh my gosh. You guys are talking about things I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, okay, so uh, let's get back to the menus. Sorry about that. I just got on a tangent, and I'm going to move the mic back now. There we go. This way I don't screw that up. Okay. So let's see what other little fun things we can find. I'm just moving the mic so you guys can hear me. All right, so what do we think? Camera, right? Let's go into the camera. Uh, let's go into system format. All right, uh, so this is the stuff that we were changing earlier. Oh, look at that. So here are your different frame rates. Okay, I know you guys want to see all this stuff. Okay, interesting, all right. I can do 30. Okay, that's cool. So now uh, what I do is I hit back and I get back to this. Here's a, uh, what do you call it? The codec, right? So I'm guessing SQ is probably bigger than light. So uh, let's see. We're going to go back. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, encoder base. Oh, here's the thing with the color temp. Oh, here's your color space. So you have S gamut. Oh, but it... Oh, wow, that's interesting. I didn't even see the Cine, or Cine and, um, and Custom. Let's go to Custom. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Let me guess. You're going to get all sorts of other fun little menus in here. Uh, okay. I probably just opened up Pandora's box. Let's see. I think you have to get out of the raw to see the picture profile. Okay. Moving the beast around is definitely, yes, it is like wrestling a grizzly bear. Oh, my gosh. All right. So you know what? Uh, I am. Oh, and yeah. Oh, here's the other cool thing. It has built-in ND filters. Yeah, and these are the different um, ND filter uh, uh, like uh, uh, settings, which is really cool. It's really helpful. And then uh, let's go back to um, back. And and this is what I was saying earlier about the color temperature. It only has three color temperatures. There's no programmable or white balance that I know of. Maybe you guys know. I did not find anything. Uh, let's see. Shutter. All right. We know about that. Oop, shutter assignment. Oh, wow. So that's interesting. I guess you can assign different uh, shutters. To, okay, that's good. Video setting. 
This is probably where you guys would get into all sorts of crazy things here. Um, again, this goes outside of my wheelhouse, and uh, I would never, I would, I'd be too scared to touch this stuff. Um, here, let's get back into, let's go back. All right, what else we got? FCI, that's, uh, oh, this is the output. Display information. Let's see what config does. Let's see. Oh, so a uh, high, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so when you're recording, the high-low key got that. So you can do real fan mode. Yeah, this is the fan mode. Right now I have it on minimum. Uh, but if you turn it up to max, it gets really loud. Hold on. Here, you guys can listen to this. This is how loud that is. <laughs> it's really loud. Oh, Sinish mode locks things to log in one. Oh, I see. Custom allows you to customize way more features. A white balance setting may be set. Oh. Oh, that's neat. Okay. That's cool. Thanks, Evan. Uh-oh. Did I just get rid of the live chat? No, I didn't. Okay. Let me get let me go back to boom. I'm just gonna go to minimum for now. Hopefully the camera doesn't cook. Alright, and then back. I'm gonna take the mic, move it back towards me. Alright, and then we're gonna go back. And then we have file. Let's see what this oh, here we go. Let's see what we have. Uh, these are the, what? Let me see if I go in here. All right, so you can import a lot. Okay. I don't want to go too deep on this and not, oh, ooh, hold on. Let's say gamma file. Let's see what we got here. Oh, uh, right now it's at, so well, I don't have anything to import. What's L3, what's that? All right, nothing there. You guys, if you're Sony experts, just drop in. If you see something you recognize, let's see, file preset. What's that? Oh, here we go. Gamma file. Uh, well, I don't want to reset that. No. Oh, no, no, no. Well, there could go. I don't want to do that. Uh-oh. Yes, cancel. <laughs> All right, let me get out of this because I don't want to break anything there. Uh, media format. Let's see what that is. Uh, media. Oh, I see. So it's to, okay. So that's to the, uh, we got the memory stick stuff. Uh, what's down here? Um, okay. Oh, that's interesting. All right. And here's the Wi-Fi. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if I went to Wi-Fi. I know you have for the Wi-Fi. You have to get a special antenna for this. It's probably another four hundred dollars. I'm not going to bother with that. Remote setting. Uh, no, nothing. Anyway, so let's get out of that. What else we have? Uh, oh, the diagnosis. Should we see how bad this is? Maybe it'll be something... Oh, I wonder. You know, it's a good question. I wonder if you can update the camera by plugging it into a computer using the Ethernet cable. Uh, so, you know, the menus are not as bad as I thought they were going to be. But here, hold on. Let me get to the output settings. So you have SDI-1. This is the output that you can do for SDI-1. And then you can go through these. The look right now is a 709. What other looks do you have? Oh, look at that. Here, Evan Olson, this is probably what you're looking for. Is that right, Evan? Let's see, Dave, how much did you even pay for this beast? My camera, oh, ha <laughs> ha. Um, on the side, oh, uh, oh, you know what, Evan? FD cards, hold on one second. I will show you one second. Uh, SD card side, Evan, is actually it's SD or uh, SD card is right there. It doesn't help you. That might help you. SD card is right up there. And I think the memory stick goes in there too. It, oh, yeah. You can set up, you can put a memory stick. Does camera four have it? No. Arg. Hold on. There we go. So. You can put an SD card or a memory stick in that little slot. You can actually see how there one fits in the lower part and one in the upper. So that's interesting. All right. And that's where you store all your camera settings, I believe. So, Evan, I thought you might like to see that. That was important, I imagine. Uh, hold on. What else do we have here? Uh, yeah, maybe. SD, yep, yep, probably to update it. Uh, the uh, Hold on. And we're looking at this. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to get out of the menu business here for just a moment. 
to go menu. There we go. We're back to this. We got that, and I'll leave this up for a moment. Oh, and we got the microphone, of course. Did that take care of it, sort of. All right, so back to here. So how long have I been on the air for, or what we call on the air? Oh my gosh, it's almost 8.30. Holy moly. This was really an in This is probably one of my longest streamcasts. Uh, so, um... Let me see, what other questions do you have? Shadows are a bit, okay, yeah, that is true. Um, but you know, if you put something in log, it's not in log right now, I don't think. It's in Rec 709. Um, I want so much to zoom the lens in, but you can't. Uh, let's see. Hold on, I'll take another sip here. I think I'm running out of gas, kids. I'm getting close to, I, I did the whole, oh, I'm gonna tell you a quick story and I'll make it quick and we'll get back to this. So yesterday, my friend Greg and I, we went to go check out the uh, Eclipse. We went up to Lake Ontario uh, on the New York side, uh, New York State side. I think it's called Sackett Bay uh, is where we hung out. Uh, we drove 650 something miles. It took us all total going to and from the, uh, the lab up there and back was almost 13 hours. There was a lot of traffic coming back down from where, uh, what is it called, the path of totality, whatever it is, the, the line of whatever it is. Um, so where we were located, there's so much traffic coming back down into our area. And what should have been like a five hour trip was like seven. <laughs> and I'm not kidding when I say that. Uh, and it was five hours up, real easy breezy. We had a great time. I'll post my eclipse pictures. I have a great shot of the bay like before and after and you see it light sunny and then it goes dark and all i can tell you is uh kids seeing that eclipse was absolutely amazing and the very few things wow me except for maybe this but the eclipse really wowed me and it's something i will never ever forget it was absolutely uh, unbelievably amazing so um speaking of amazing uh the camera so i'm gonna wrap this up in a moment uh well, let's go q a hold on Oh, thank you, Lester. Sackett's Harbor. <laughs> I kept saying Sackett's Bay. It's Sackett Har Sackett's Harbor. Thank you so much. It's one hour north of Syracuse, Syracuse, directly north, and really wonderful people there. Met a bunch of people, Greg and I. We sat right on like a um, like on the dock. It was just wonderful, and it wasn't like overcrowded or anything. People were really pleasant. We had lunch there. Walked around the little downtown area, or the village, whatever you guys in New York State call it, Hamlet Village. I don't know what it is, but it was a little little town. So uh, I'm going to do a Q&A. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns? Hopefully not too many concerns. Um, I hope to see you at the Vintage Computer Festival East in Wall, New Jersey. That's Wall, New Jersey, uh, this Saturday. And I might be there for a sliver on Sunday. But if you definitely want to see me, Saturday I'll be there from 9 to, like, 5. So what questions do you have, kids? Um, let's see. Uh, I can't really... I will do. I will say this. I know, uh, Robert, I think you asked about the cost of this camera. One, it's not as much as you might think. Two, I'm going to give you this clue. Oh, and that rhymed. Two, I'm going to give you this clue. If you go on eBay and research F35 uh, Cine Alta camera, when you see the price of that camera, subtract $2,000. That's how much I paid for this camera. See, simple math, and I'm gonna make you guys work to figure out how much I paid for it. Hopefully that kid's auction is still on there. The camera is in Texas, I believe, and it's the only F35, he has some matte box. He's only selling the camera, not the matte box and the lens and all that junk. I think there's a matte box, but that is how much I paid for the camera. Go to eBay, look up F35, it's just the camera. And uh, whatever that guy, it, and it's in te he's in Texas, subtract two grand from that price. Is that right? Let me see, five, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right, that's how much I paid for this. And which, by the way, um, is an unbelievable deal considering there's somebody selling one of these, actually somebody selling this recorder for not the controller, but just the recorder for 
$10,000, and they're out of their stinking minds, but okay. Uh, let's see. There's a... No, it's not that one, Nebulous. Yeah, Ryan Foley, you are correct, sir. Plus 100 to that number, Ryan Foley. So it's that your number plus 100, and that's what I paid for this. See, you guys are all good. And those... Okay. So... Kids, what are your questions, comments, or concerns? Bring them on. Uh, any questions about Vintage Computer Festival East, Vintage Computer Festival Midwest? I got, uh, here, hold on. I got this uh, Canon, uh, what are we, this is like an XL1, right? I always forget these things because they're so, where the heck's the model number for this? Oh, the XL1, that's right. This is an XL1, it has all the sticky stuff on there that I gotta take off. I know Kyle from Kyle's Digital Lab knows how to do that. Uh, but I'll get there. So, uh, what questions do you have, kids? Yes. Well, actually, when you say that is crazy, Robert, do you mean that it's crazy that it's too much or too little? And I know your answer is... Oh, it is, if that's what you think, yeah, surprisingly enough, uh, I did have to negotiate that down because the seller wanted a bunch more for it. Uh, for the camera, and I worked them down to that number. Uh, like I said, it's um, uh, Ryan, your number plus a hundred, and that's what I paid. Uh, but it, I think, is worth it. I think this is going to be a showstopper uh, at the Vintage Computer Festival East. It is so ridiculously different uh, that I had to get it. <laughs> but by the way, Ryan Foley, what's really important about your number is that. The peripheral, not, I keep saying that, the accessories for this camera are not cheap. Like a base plate's like 500 bucks. The, um, the dovetail plate's probably about 100. It's a small rig, it's about 100. Uh, this controller, uh, all this stuff is not cheap. But, uh, and it's, and you can, and you don't want to put 15 millimeter stuff on here because it's too small. Yeah, you can put a 15 millimeter base plate with the rods, you know, all this stuff here. Let me go to here. You can put this stuff on there, the little 15 millimeter things. But trust me when I tell you this thing is too big for that. You need the industrial grade 19 millimeter rods, base plates, uh, monitor holders, everything. Um, here, let me give you a, sh uh, I'll show you the back again. Here, let's go to camera four. This way you can see this stuff. Here, I'll widen out for you a little bit. Yeah, I wish I could show you the recorder top. So there you go. And uh, there we go. Oh, wait a minute. There's the USB ports I mentioned before. And all right. So uh, let's see what we have. We have the time code. We got these, we got uh, aux in. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if you can bring in, um, so I guess you could use this recorder separately without using it with the camera to bring in other video feeds and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Has um, line, oh, this is really cool. I'm sorry guys, my big old head screwed up the focus. Let me go in, this is actually pretty cool. This is very like, hold on, let me zoom. There we go. Look at that. The What's really neat about this is the the audio. You have phantom power. It just it's just like it has like a little two channel. Uh, oh yeah, one two channel inputs here, and it has uh, mic line and phantom power. That is really cool. I didn't even notice that until now. So uh, there you go. I'm gonna turn this back around probably all twisted up by now. Yes, it is. I can see the cable is... Hold on one second, kids. I've been turning this around too much. The, the power cable is getting wrapped. There we go. All right, great. All right, what are your questions, everybody? I think you missed it earlier. Uh, I think the shutter port is to synchronize the mechanical shutter between... The oh, okay. Oh, that's neat. All right, thank you for that note. Uh, 4K for 3K. <laughs> I like that. Uh, so here's the thing. I know there's like red cameras and all these other cameras out there. I get it. You know, everybody has a different flavor of camera that they like, and some cameras are better than others. But to me, I just thought this was really an interesting camera, and um, it's just really kick-ass. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just, just, I just thought...
you know, instead of bringing 10 cameras to the Vintage Computer Festival, I'll just bring the one, and I think that'll be worth it. Um, classic Sony. Yep, yep. Uh, oh, I know. Cheap. Really cheap? Yeah, but, you know, hold on. Uh, Retro Gaming Bureau. Yeah, but your A7S III is not... 18 pounds. <laughs> it's this tiny little camera, not this huge monster of a camera. So, uh, you know, it is, it is cool. And you can bring this to a client's shoot and they're going to be wickedly impressed, but you got to bring so much stuff with it. It's unbelievable. And especially when you put batteries on this, I just have shore power or a regular AC pumped into this. Uh, once you start sticking batteries on this with the Bebop thing in the back, oh my gosh, it is crazy stupid big. All right, let's see. Uh, Karen doesn't need to this uh, advance. It's just if you're always saying my answer. If you missed it, this is a crazy as a medium. is a huge, huge high range camera. Mine doesn't need to see this. <laughs> All right. I'm going to wrap this up in about two minutes. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Um, I really was looking, you know, I mean, I really looked forward to doing this for you, uh, showing you this camera because that is part of what my channel is about is sharing these crazy cameras with you, uh, my collection and all the things that I do. Um, so, uh, this one is definitely what I would call extreme camera collecting, uh, but really worth it. And, you know, you guys have, I hope you're enjoying yourselves, the stuff that I cover. Um, you know, I have a lot of silly cameras and stuff, but I enjoy it. And this is what I do. You know, some people uh, collect cars. I collect cameras. It's just what I like. And these cameras have inspired me. I've done things with some of these cameras that, you know, like when I was a kid um, and I'm a TV person today. Uh, so uh, that's why I get into all this old stuff is because it inspired me when I was a kid to get into the TV business. So um, this camera is kind of like a dream camera to a certain degree because I was sort of a filmmaker wannabe, but I just went into TV and not filmmaking. And this thing is just really neat. It's such a part of, I would say, like filmmaking history, right? It's probably one of the big pushes for digital cinema right here is this camera. I mean, they, they, I mean, they made movies with these things and, uh, and they still do, of course. Um, but at any rate, what are, you, what are you guys writing now? Oh, well, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate uh, your time, and I hope to see you guys at the Vintage Computer Festival East or Midwest. And I had this crazy idea. I had a crazy idea that I was going to have something like a Dave's Retro Techapalooza, something stupid like that, where I would go to a library at a, you know, near the lab somewhere, um, and uh, people could bring their collectibles and we would display them and uh, retro tech collectibles. Uh, and then I had another idea, and, and tell me what you guys think about this. I hope you're listening. So, um, I have Retro One. That is the uh, Retro One is our laboratory mobile retro tech unit. Uh, it's basically a 1985 Oldsmobile station wagon. I actually, oh, I got a picture of it that I'll post. Um, I drove the old station wagon all the way to Providence from the lab, which is about two hours, and I drove Retro One out there. It, I think it was its first long-range mission to pick up this camera. And my, I'm, tell me what you guys think about this. I had an idea where, much like Antiques Roadshow, we would take Retro One, the old station wagon, mobile retro tech laboratory we would take it on the road to go to subscribers homes uh, or not their homes per se but to like their towns where we would set up a table some lights and if you have a real special piece of equipment that we think would be cool enough to go drive out two or three hours tops maybe two hours tops from the new york city area we might bring the show on the road sort of to go check out your retro tech. Uh, so it's an idea I'm playing with. Um, it's, but uh, we're also talking about a Dave's Retro Tech -a Palooza, something like that. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a great idea? Let me know. Put it in the comments. Uh, I'll definitely check it out. So let's see. Uh, absolutely enjoy the hell out of <laughs> Well, 
This one is a extended edition. And by the way, just in case you don't know, if you go to YouTube and you look at like my channel or any other channel, you can look at all the past live streams. If you go to the live button, I choose to record my live streams. So it should be there. If you wanna go back and review the camera, it'll be on the live stream. And I gotta push that more because I think people are missing the live streams. Well, not missing the live streams, but they're missing the playback of the live streams uh, which have a lot of you know a lot of content. So I think that's it. I'm gonna wrap it up. Oh, oh no, that's a great question, um, Retro Gaming Bureau. I don't have a Pelican case for this. I don't have a flight case, whatever case. Uh, right now, a, I have a. <laughs> I, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this. It's a storage tub lined with super thick foam, and this gets dropped into it. The lens gets packed in its own. Actually, for the lens, I have uh, this case here. What do you call this? An RG case for the lens. Um, but I do eventually want to get a flight case for it or like a heavy duty anvil type case, something like that. But I think, um, I know this is really bad, but my storage bin with the thick plastic, uh, thick uh, foam, uh, and it's like spongy foam. Um, for now, that'll get me by uh, before I have to fork out another grand for a storage case. <laughs> Everything on this camera is not cheap. It's driving me crazy. Can't they just make one thing that is simple and cheap? No. Everything is expensive. All right. I think that's going to wrap it up, everybody. I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in New Jersey, Wall, New Jersey, at the Vintage Computer Festival East this Saturday, April 13th, 2024. I hope to see you there. And in September, look it up, Vintage Computer Festival Midwest. Uh, but until then, uh, I'm probably going to do a few more videos. Maybe we'll take this out uh, to film with it. i got to figure out how to do this. I mean, right now, this whole... This whole live stream kind of covered everything I was going to cover, but um, uh, but at any rate, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Today's Monday. Yeah, yeah. So good rest of your Monday. Uh, take care, and we'll see you soon here at Dave's Retro Video Lab. See you later, guys. Bye. Okay, now i got to go turn the live stream off.